In this video, we're going to be working with exponential expressions. We have 2 to the power x equals 3, 3 to the power y equals 5, and 10 to the power z equals 8. And we're going to be solving for z, but not just numerically, because you can do that right away, obviously, using logs. We're going to be finding z in terms of x and y. Okay, so that's the goal solving for z in terms of x and y. I know the thumbnail didn't make that clear, but hopefully the, the title and the description made it clear for you. All right, let's get started. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following. First of all, notice that 3 to the power y is equal to 5 and 3 is equal to 2 to the power x. So I can replace the 3 with 2 to the power x. That gives me something nice, which associates 2 and 5, and also, also puts the x and y together. So this gives us 2 to the power xy equals 5. Now how am I going to use this in my expressions to find z? Notice that the base for z is 10, which is made up of 2 and 5. And on the right-hand side, we have an 8, which is 2 to the third power. So we kind of have to think about all these things in terms of exponents, all right, and bases, of course. The exponents are variables, so we're trying to associate z with x and y. So let's see what we can do. So far, we got 2 to the xy equals 5, and 10 is 2 times 5. So why don't we use that, 10 to the z equals 8, and 10 is 2 times 5. So we can basically write this as 2 times 5 to the power z equals 8, and 8 is 2 to the third power. I think it makes sense to write it as a power of 2 because we have a 2 in our expression. And then use the power of a product, which you can write as 2 to the z times 5 to the z, and then that equals 2 to the third. Always express everything with a base and an exponent. That's better for our purposes. And now the property that I use is just like a times b to the power n is a to the n times b to the n. n doesn't have to be an integer, by the way. And in this case, it isn't. So now we got something nice because we have twos on both sides and we have a five. And my goal is to solve for z. So let's see where this takes us. And we also have this fact in place. So here's two things you can do. You can go ahead and replace the 5 with 2 to the power xy. You could also do the following, uh, divide both sides by 2 to the z and put the 5s and z's on different sides. I mean, 5s and 2s, I meant. Uh, but that's not necessary. You, you can just replace the 5 with 2 to the xy and you should be good to go. Let's do it. This gives us 2 to the power z times 5, which can be written as 2 to the power xy, and then raise it to the power z equals Two to the third. So the nice thing about this equation is all the bases are the same. So when the bases are the same, we are happy, right? Because we could multiply and divide. Of course, we have the superpower property here. We're going to multiply these exponents. That's going to give us 2 to the power z multiplied by 2 to the power x, y, z. You know the expression easy as a, b, c, as easy as x, y, z, hopefully. This is 2 to the third. Now, we are multiplying two exponentials, so let's add the exponents. And then set the exponents equal to each other because the bases are equal and they're different from 1 and negative 1 and 0. So we don't have any of those special cases. The exponents are equal. Of course, I'm assuming that we are looking for real solutions. In the case of complex solutions, what happens? That's a totally different story. You have to include the complex logarithm, the Euler's number, e to the power something, you know, the polar form, so on and so forth. Lots of complications. I don't know if there are any, you know, complex solutions to this. I haven't tried it. But anyway, let's continue with the reals. So now we can say z plus xyz is equal to 3. Awesome. Remember our goal. Always keep that in mind. We're trying to solve for z in terms of x and y. That's our goal. So here, we're so close, all we have to do is 
take out a z, factor it out, and then divide both sides by 1 plus xy, and you're done. All right? That's the answer because we were looking for z. It was supposed to be in terms of x and y, and it is. Obviously, you can find other expressions for z, but this seems to be the most natural one. You, again, z can be found numerically, x and y can be found numerically. That's actually going to be the basis for our second method. So let's get to it. Second method. Again, our problem was 2 to the x equals 3, 3 to the y equals 5, and 10 to the z equals 8. There was another type of problem where we had something like 2 to the x equals 3, 3 to the y equals 5, and 5 to the z equals 11. I don't know. And then it's asking for x, y, z. Have you noticed? You're just going to plug it in, and then plug it in, and then you're going to the x, y, z. Of course, if this becomes a power of 2, I guess it'll make more sense so that you can get an integer. If not, then the answer will be logarithmic. Let's just say this is equal to 8. But our problem is slightly different because it contains an extra 2 to the power z, so the solution will be a little different. All right, let's proceed. Now, we're going to go ahead and do the following. First method relied on exponentials. Just use the, the properties of exponents. The second method is going to rely on logarithms. And for this, you could use the natural log, the Napier log, or the, uh, what's the other one? Base 10, just log. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use nat uh, natural logarithm, which is ln. So let's ln both sides here. This gives us x ln 2 is equal to ln 3, and x equals ln 3 over ln 2. So that's x. Great. Similarly, if you do it for y, you're going to get ln 5 over ln 3. Easy, right? And then for this one, if you do it, you're going to get z equals ln 8 over ln 10. I mean, it makes sense because now everything is a ratio of two lns, and obviously this shows you that x, y, z are all constants, but we're trying to find the relationship between them, right? So we've got to put the x and y together to get z somehow. But let's simplify z first. z is ln 8 over ln 10, and I can write this as ln 2 to the third, divided by ln 2 times 5. By, again, using properties of logs, I can move it to the front, 3 ln 2, and this means the sum of two logs, or lns, right? If you are lning a product, it is the sum of two lns. Make sense? And this is true for more than two numbers, obviously. It's a really nice property. That, that comes from exponents, obviously. So now, we have, we have our z in terms of ln 2 and ln 5, and x was expressed using ln2, ln3, and ln5. So we kind of have to get rid of the ln3. You get the motivation? We don't have any, we don't have any ln3 here. So let's go ahead and get rid of the ln3. How can you get rid of the ln3? You can solve for ln3 and then set them equal to each other, or there's an easier way to do it, just multiply x and y. You see, the motivation behind multiplying these two things is to get rid of ln3. Because when you multiply x, y, you're going to get ln3 over ln2, multiply by ln5 over ln3, and ln3 is going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with ln5 over ln2. Now, how could you express this in terms of that? Easy, using ratios of proportions. Since ln2 is at the bottom, let's divide everything by ln2. So z is 3 ln2 over ln2 plus ln5. Divide the top by ln2, divide the bottom by ln2 and you're going to get what you need. Now ln5 over ln2 will be replaced with xy, so z will be 3 over 1 plus xy. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.